Fuck, we're recording. Here we are. Woohoo! Woo! Yeah. Now, everybody, welcome back. I'm calling this week a great friend of mine, old touring friend of mine, amazing guitar player, amazing human being, Mr. Angel Vivaldi. Yeah. What is it, people of the internet? Yeah. Glad man. to be here. Good to see you. Good to have you here with us. Yeah, man. Likewise, do you look good? You look, you know, excited to be alive. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's good to be alive. It's been a hell of a year. Um, how you been, man? How's how was 2020 for you? Uh, 2020 went by in a blink of an eye, and it's amazing to realize that we're almost a quarter of a way of the way through 2021 already. Let's just talk about that, which is kind of nuts. Um, to be quite honest, it was an incredible year for me, um, outside of, you know, obviously pandemic and seeing how it affected a lot of, you know, our mutual friends and people that we love and care about, um, and how it's impacted the music industry, you know, but, you know, uh, much like everyone else who can say the same, it's a matter of pivoting, you know, you pivot and you kind of figure out, you know, you're given a set of cards, how are you going to play them? Right. Yeah. So correct. I'm just grateful that I was, you know, well, that's the thing, but, uh, knowing you, I mean, I've known you for at least five years now, you've always been, always been the kind of guy who were like, kind of like one step ahead of the game, embracing the changes of the music business. You started out as a DIY artist. Uh, you know, didn't go down that traditional route, you know, as you know, I, I think I've, I've, I'm definitely more old school in that sense, you know, coming from the background of, you know, record label, publishing deals, all that kind of stuff. Where, whereas you were kind of leading the way of, okay, this is how it's done now, guys. And uh, I remember we had all these conversations on the tour bus that we shared and when we toured together. And, uh, and uh, you know, I remember you were telling me about all these new platforms that were you know, the next big thing and stuff. And you always kind of like had your ear out there in the business of, 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 um, of what's happening, what's coming up next. And, um, again, yeah. So, so I think, I, th I think, um, you know, guys like you have been kind of like in the front line of this and, and seeing how drastically the business is changing, you know? So I think obviously people like you definitely will have no problem because you're kind of like on the front line of all this and, and, uh, um, and so you know, for me, I it was uh it's it it was inspiring to see that, and and I was telling this to you when we were touring, like wow, this is this is like, this, look at this guy how this he's doing things, and like, I thought I was DIY until I met you, and then saw how you were doing things, and like, you know, basically kind of like taking lessons about okay, this is this is great how it can be done in another way, somebody showing me another way, so um. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think, you know, when you're, when you're touring with people, you know, and I could see the same thing about, you know, but in particular, you know, touring with you and Andy James in particular, you know, you, when you see someone who's really good at doing something, you know, I, I, whenever I meet anyone, I always assume that I can learn something from them, no matter what, no matter what. Now, in, in the really a matter of if I want to learn that particular thing or not, but in the case with you and Andy, you know, and seeing how incredibly consistent you are every single night. I mean, I don't, I can't recall a wrong note played, honestly, truly, either one of you guys. And, you know, there's a certain tenacity that I was just like, fuck, man, holy shit, you know? And it really kind of lights the fire under your ass. And then, you know, so we did our tour, it was a uh, fall of 2016. And then the, the following year, I toured with Andy. So it was like back to back, you know, and I did two tours with Andy. Um, and even drunk, man, that guy is just flawless, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Incredible. A and he's not human. He's his, his skill is in incredible. Yeah. He's from another he's planet. Absolutely. But the interesting thing about that is, you know, and, and I think, I think a lot of people who are musicians listening to this can resonate with this. And I'm, and I hope that they understand that it's coming from someone maybe that they look up to in some way or another, but you know, even myself as an established artist, I would look and, and kind of be like, damn, man, like it almost gives you like sort of an inferiority complex to a degree, right? <laughs> but then what happens is 
as I continue to go through tours and touring with different people that I was learning different things from and having the same conversations that I was having with you, I realized, you know, comparison is really the thief of happiness. You know, there's certain things that, you know, I'm really good at and certain things that you're really good at and certain things that Andy's good at, certain things that Nita's good at, you know, and everyone has particular strengths. It's just a matter if you're aware of whether you want to learn from that, you know? So literally after touring with you, you guys, man, I mean, I remember, especially you in particular, because I don't think I did, I did Synapse until 2017 when I toured with Andy. Dude, you're alternate. Well, you do economy pick more, right? What's that? If I do economy? Economy pick more, right? Or do you alternate pick? I, I used to do more econ uh, more alternate. And, and the last few years, I started getting I started getting lazier and st uh, developing my, <laughs> my economy picking. So now I'm almost doing that exclusively so i don't know how that happened but i, I guess it's called getting older maybe <laughs> i don't know <laughs> no, dude, like, some would argue that's a more of a pain in the ass you know but i just you know i really love the way that when you alternate pick it has this very aggressive kind of sound that you know me i'm more legato and, and, and tapping stuff um and sweeping here and there but more along those lines mm -hmm. i was like that's a, that's a color that i want to start painting with my new record and then um i did a song called adrenaline on synapse and i started like really implementing that a lot more because of you so thank you um but that's what it is it, it's really about again just like you know surrounding yourself with people who are better at doing things that you want to be better at i think yeah i mean it's it's and that's the thing you know like one thing that i always now what we're basically what you're describing here is that something that i always tell like if, if i'm doing a clinic or if i'm teaching somebody or you know like and somebody asks for advice i'm like well you should be you should be playing with other guitar players or other musicians and play with people that are you know as good as you or you know the or people that you know what i mean that are it's better people, that are like better you. some things or something just you know because you, that's how you learn that's how you progress as a musician that's how that's where you get inspired for ideas and uh yeah. well you know I'm, I'm glad to hear that because i guess we, we kind of both inspired each other in different ways um Absolutely. musically and maybe non-musically and the way we do things and the way we kind of like conduct our business or you know our, our playing or whatever it is so yeah i have a lot of fun memories from the tour with you and uh and then you're right after right after that you went in and you, you did um synapse and then um the following year and then yeah we did that collaboration on your track uh, oxytocin yeah yeah that's a sick track I, I basically i love that record it's 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 a great record it's so inspiring and uh i mean i've i've been inspired by that to to write some stuff on my new album actually from from your last record so it's um and i remember i always told you you're like you're like the new joe satriani remember i was telling you that on the bus <laughs> <laughs> i'm like you're, you're... My like <laughs> I'm like, he's a guy, you know, he's a, yeah. Cool, man. Oh, but you know, that's the funny thing is, it's like, you know, to expand on that real quick, it's, you know, you have to really focus on what you're really good at too, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, like I put my focus on, not so much on, you know, being like Guthrie Govin every night, you know, but I guess a lot of it happens here, you know, like how I write the songs and, and that's the reason why it takes me ever to write, you know, but um, you know, I, I think you feel the same way as like, you know, it's a part of our legacy. You know what I'm saying? It's like our music will definitely live on, hopefully, with any luck, long after we're gone. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's a representation of what you did, you know? You know, shows and touring, it, it's, I love performing, man. I absolutely love it. But, you know, if I'm being completely honest, I don't put a lot of stock into it. Like, you know, it's a lot of work especially for like a guy like me who's just doing everything himself it's a lot of work man it's it takes so much out of me and it takes time expensive you know to invest into making this feel memorable you know mm -hmm. and i think the people there will find memories of like oh my god remember that one time that angel Baldy hit you with the water bottle or something fun you know but the collective of the, the the bulk of people who enjoy your music aren't gonna remember, you know, there's only a small margin of, of people who are at this show. Mm -hmm. Everyone's on the internet, you know? So I put a lot more of my focus on just the songwriting and then I kind of bring it to the show to elevate those songs, you know? But the songs are the, the foundation 
of everything that I do and the videos too, like the visual and the aesthetics. And stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. You are definitely, uh, and that's what one thing that was also very inspiring by you, you are that you're an artist that you pay attention to detail, uh, which starts from the music and the production and the things that you'll play or the way you compose because obviously yeah you're a guy who just doesn't throw stuff out there just for the sake of it you you really wait for the right moment and, and until i've noticed that about you because i've i've been you know i've been following you for years now so i know that you won't say something un unless you have something to say so when you're ready That's you'll do it and you'll do it with with style and and, and you put the same amount of effort into your visuals and uh yeah on, on your videos and on and on how i've noticed that how your websites look how your merch looks how your uh you know your social media looks all, all, like everything so um I, yeah that was really eloquently put honestly you know because you know I, I guess it's just a matter of i think it's a couple things you know honestly i think a lot of it is just you know the type of people that we're born to be you know like we're just temperament and you can't really do much about it you know it's also the experiences that you go through life, you know, how you're raised, you know, who, who are your family members, how do they influence you, what do they teach you to do, what do they not teach you to do, you know, and, you know, much like touring with you guys, this like, you know, as a kid, I was kind of looking around and seeing what moved me, you know, I was like, I don't know why that moved me, but I love that, you know, I remember, you know, Michael Jackson, the video, remember, uh, remember the time? Yeah. With the whole kind of feel, man, I remember, I mean, all of Michael Jackson incredible but that one in particular man like it just it just it was just it was just mind-boggling it was spellbinding to me you know the visual the the wardrobe the choreography the song itself was awesome you know and i just kept that you know and then as i got older i sort of seen those little things in all the artists that i loved you know like nirvana i loved the dark mysterious strong teen spirit it just couldn't see Face, it was very foggy. Everything was in slow mo. Certain it was just, it made you want to know more about it. You know, and the same thing with Nine Inch Nails. My God, I could be here talking about Nine Inch Nails all day. Visually, the audio, the the performances, the live experience. You know, I wish I could have a budget like that because then you see a whole other level. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> but you're right that you know some videos um, have probably elevated certain songs that have kind of carved into our mine when we were kids like like you say you, you remember a song because you kind of remember the video or, be, or because the video was so cool not that the song wasn't as good but think of like reverse engineer would that song have a big such song or whatever song would it have would it have such a big impact on you if the video wasn't so cool or so unique uh i was thinking about that about uh the song uh losing my religion by rem the other day um, because that was like a song that was so unique. It was so different for the time. But how about that video? Like if that video wasn't as insane as it was and so like, I don't know how to put it. I mean, it was like, I mean, you think the same thing with, with Nine Inch Nails is closer. You know, you think of Trent Reznor, like, you know, kind of like this floating, you know, immediately, right. you know, and, and to be quite honest, I don't feel a Martian winner would have been appreciated as much if I didn't do that video for it. You know, I don't right. think that, you know, cause when I talk to people or, or, you know, on fans, like when we're doing VIP or merch or hangouts, stuff like that, the first thing that people say is just like, like that video, that video, the video, like, you know, and, and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm grateful for it. I'm so incredibly grateful for it, you know, and, and overall it's a simple treatment. I mean, we had to, you know, we hurt because you know going in a five degree freezer doesn't feel good but i mean um uh but that's, that's the what, one thing i always mm -hmm. no that, that's what they mean you have to suffer for the art you have to go in a freezer <laughs> yeah, pretty, literally literally man and uh but yeah so I, it, I think i always knew that i wanted some sort of visual for myself but then i knew the value of how much that's worth you know I did mm -hmm. that video and my career really, really took off. But at the same time, I, I, I will say this. The one thing that I realized is everyone kind of has their own, as cliche as it sounds like, a, their key to success. Like, um, good example is like Pliny. You know, Pliny doesn't need videos like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 
can kind of get away with doing things that are more simple and elegant. And he has, but even he has a feel, you know, it's kind of like this soft, new age, kind of almost cutesy kind of feel, you know? Um, you know, uh, another example, like animals as eaters, they don't need crazy videos like that. They, they just, they, they can just be in a room playing and it's fine, you know? Whereas with me, not that I feel like I need it, but I feel like it, like you said, is a great point. It really does help to, it, it helps the listener's experience, you know? I Absolutely. think that when you're visually captivating and you're audibly captivating, because the visual is just, it's just, all that's going to do is going to, they're going to make, that's going to make them click the video. You know, the yeah. song is going to keep there. So if you were to, if you can kind of like balance out how much you stimulate the, the fan's senses, you know, I think that's better. Like that, that it, you'll be remembered more. I feel. I agree. Yeah. And it's always so such a tough decision. Like, how do you know what's the right visual? I mean, of course you can have an idea, but like, how do you know if this is going to work? That's what I mean. Like ultimately there is no, there is no, uh, uh, certain recipe f to, to make it work. Like what, what would I, what can I do that will go viral? Will this video like artistically, can it go viral? Can it reach more people? Like, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you've been there, you, you know, you've tried out things and you thought, okay, this is the shit. And then, you know, it didn't perform as, as you would ex expect it to. And then something that maybe you didn't think it was going to go as, down as that well, that's the one that, that was the one video. So, I mean, it happened to me a couple of times with, I mean, talking about visuals, you know, like the most, for some reason, the, the, the videos that I've spent less, the least money on are the ones that had the most views and then stuff that I've kind of put a fortune into it they were like okay yeah whatever <laughs> yeah yeah dude you know and because i do a lot of business consultations with artists and stuff and i've been doing them since 2020 i feel like since everyone was given the luxury of time mm -hmm. they were able to work from home bro i've never i've like 2020 was my best year i've ever had because everyone was just like i have the time i'm gonna do it this year you know and right. um the one thing is dude you're absolutely right there is no science to first of all not even the visual what song do i choose you know it's and that you know how it is man. the songs that we love as artists are the ones that no one gives a fuck about yep. they're they always like the <laughs> weird songs you know and then you're like all right it's this song right so i use this analogy right so it's like and i tell this to artists i'm like listen there's two parts of your brain there's the artist and then there's the bank all right the artist has to convince the bank i need money for this like a good example is um, I did this video for the song too. It was like, we were in a desert. It was like spacey. I don't know if you saw that one. I've seen that one. Yeah. It's a killer video. All right. Thank you. But big mistake, big mistake because the artist was like, her, her, I had this amazing concept. You know, it's like a, it's like a blind guardian song. There's no fucking chorus in it. It's just one long stream of consciousness. It's very prog. And I was like, I want to tell the story. And the bank's like, well, are you sure that's the right song? And I go, yeah, I just released a video on Martian Winter and I had a, a 5 million views. So you have to trust me. The bank was like, okay, $14,000 later, three years after I released it, I just recouped it. Yeah. You know, it's, there's no science to it, man. And it's like, hey, there's the good news is that you did recoup it. I did. Thank God. You know, and I, I'm thankful that I, I recouped it when I did because, you know, no, I'm grateful to say I even recouped it because I mean that's that's a that's a lot. But I think the most valuable thing is just learning how incredibly important the song choice is and to bounce ideas off people whose opinions you value. You know, show your friends who are actually gonna sit there and listen to the song or the mm -hmm. record and mm -hmm. be what ones do you resonate with and why? Give me give me, you know, constructive criticism, you know, because I need it, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, you don't know everything there is. And that's the problem. When you're successful at anything, you keep that. And then you feel like you'll be successful at everything from that point on. And that's not the truth. It's not the truth. And it's scary as shit. You know, especially when you're doing it yourself and you're investing into yourself. It's just like, is this going to fucking work? Yeah. I'm investing my money and effort. It's like, no, 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 no. You're nervous. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know, believe me, I've made the, uh, the wrong video or single choices so many times. 
Um, mm. I've learned how to listen a bit more as I grow older to other people around me. And uh, yeah, I do ask for second opinions nowadays. Before I was so stubborn about this, but no, this is the one. This is the one. And like, yeah. yeah. yeah but you know, you live and you learn, man. Uh, and uh, I think for any artist or any aspiring artist or whatever, uh, you, you have to make those mistakes you, because they are ultimately, they are your mistakes and not somebody else's. Correct. So, you know, that there's a, there's a, some truth in that too. You know, it's good to, um, you know, if you, uh, you know, if, if you, if you fall down, at least it's because you chose to go down that path and you didn't do somebody else a favor. And then you're like that, then right. that's, that, that's a worse feeling, I think. Absolutely. You know, but the other thing too, is there is something to be said about sticking to your guns. Cause obviously that's what got us to a point to even have people to balance opinions off, right? It gets you to a certain level. So you have to stick to your guns at a certain point, but you have to let go of that at a certain point. It's just like, you know, uh, one of the things I got into over the past couple of years is like, you know, like fitness and like really taking care of myself in that regard. And one of the things that we talk about is, you know, the, the workout routine that you use to get yourself from a 90 bench press to 180 is not going to be the same routine that you use to get from 180 to 500. You're going to use something completely different, you know, and the same thing rings, rings true to this, you know, stick to your guns to a degree, you know, but just don't be so narrow minded. You know? Yeah. Get older. Now I want to change uh, the subject a little bit and uh, well, still about music, but um, I want to ask you about your new guitar. I just saw you have a brand new guitar. Yeah, from Charvel, and uh, can you show it to me? Is it is it around? Is it uh, this one right here? But you, you can't really see on the lights of the color here. But Ooh. this is the uh, six string Nova. That's beautiful, man. By Charvel. So now we have the we have to uh, we have to do another song together so that you can use your red one with the reverse headstock, and I'll use this one. Yes. <laughs> We got to. It was bad timing. Dude, yeah, I man. Say this here on on camera on uh, on uh, because um, on record because I I just did the new record and uh, I did ask you to um, to play a solo, but it was uh, bad timing because you were doing some of the stuff and then by the time you were free, I had to wrap it up and and unfortunately I could not. I, I would have really loved to have you on the record, but um, hopefully in the next one we can do something. I would absolutely love that, or even if we do a single afterward, um, yes. I would absolutely. Yeah, I was so bummed, man. Well, that kind of brings me to, um, well, the reason why was coming to the band with like a singer. And uh, yeah, we started uh, with, with, I can't say the name on here, but I'll tell you who it is who's drumming after we okay, wrap okay. the You know so, him. So you're joining a new band? Yeah, I formed a new band. It's, uh, it's me, um, a singer, and... Uh, you know, right now I'm just a drummer and the project I started honestly back in 2014, if I'm honest, but um, the drummer who uh, I started this with, you know, he's just literally been touring stuff. And then when he's not touring, I'm touring and, and he was never able to like, just sit down and track drums. But obviously with the pandemic happening, we all had time. So he went, he practiced his drums. Um, I just literally wrapped up guitars Oh man, probably three weeks ago. Now I'm on to bass. The singer's doing his thing, and uh, we're just kind of figuring out exactly how we're going to safely go about shooting videos and, and doing everything for that. So but, that's um, your next. So that's your next project. It's not going to be a solo record. It's going to be a, a a band thing. Well, there's actually two. I'm doing both this year. You're doing both. So you you, <laughs> you okay? You're working on on a solo record as well. Yeah, yeah. That'll hopefully be out sometime. I'm thinking like during the fall realistically but you know how it is man we say a day and three years goes by yep. <laughs> <laughs> so briefly a little bit before i just i want to see that guitar a little bit can you tell me a little bit about the specs on it sorry i'm jumping back and forth but yeah i wanted to i wanted to see a little bit i, I love the gold hardware love it yeah we're doing the gold hard work of course uh demarzio air norton zone zone um this is the goto 510 the class which is incredible um, the bass, the, the body still basswood, um, to just think it sounds great with this type of combination. Um, for the most part, the specs are almost identical to the, the Sage Green Nova with this first one right here. 
And then the second one that we released was the same one in you know, matte black. Um, the biggest difference with this is the neck profile. The thing that I realized was that you can't really take the string neck profile and just do a six string version of it. It doesn't work because the neck thickness and the ratio, like it has to be perfect. Like if this goes lower, this has to be changed. You can't leave it like that. Um, right. So I think we did like three different profiles and literally man, like not for nothing. This is the most, this is like the apex of six string neck. It is fucking perfect. It is just so comfortable. It's a little bit thicker. You'd be proud of me. A little bit thicker <laughs> than <laughs> my normal like thin fucking, you know. <laughs> but man, it just feels incredible. Like honestly, like I, I haven't really been playing too much on the string for the past year. I've been mostly playing all six string. I fucking love it, man. I love it. I love six strings as well. But yeah, as you know. man, this is the six I, yeah, uh, I probably need to. <laughs> it's a uh, little rumor, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, I'd I'd love to get my hands on one of those and uh, try it out. And uh, I also love uh, thicker necks, as you know. So I'm I'm because I, th it's just I grew up on a Strat neck. So um, I think I'm really gonna love this guitar. So um, I I want one now. So oh, I'll dude, yeah, absolutely. And the other thing too is uh, you know, because um, uh, some people like you know have issues with like tuning stability. Because there's like there's no Floyd or anything on here. It's just like they go to five. Ten. The one thing I will say about this guitar, and and to some degree, yeah, I understand. You know, listen, it's not a flocking system. You know, it's not going to be 100 percent like a Floyd would. But because the neck is like a little bit chunkier, um, and we have like the reverse tilt back headstock is the only charbel that has that because typically most of them have like the string trees, mm -hmm. and I hate string trees, dude. It's like why add more points of tension? You know, the more points of tension you have especially on the G string of all strings, the yep. more it's going to come out of tune is like, so we just took them off and took back the headstock tank in like Tempesta and we got it perfect, man. I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited for everyone to get their hands on them. Like pre-orders have been insane. Yes. So I'm, I'm sure, sure it's going to be a lot of people, you know, quite happy with this. So. I think so too. Congratulations. And uh, I think, I mean, the guitar is beautiful. It's just beautiful. It's, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, we're, we're really stoked on it. So, you know, we'll see. We're already, you know, you know how it is in the industry. They're already talking about 2022. What are we going to do next? So, yeah, it's exciting times, man. Good stuff, man. Good. Well, you know, I, uh, I'm really glad that we got to uh, catch up. I see you've been very busy. You were, you've got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm really looking forward to hearing your new band. You got to tell me all about it after we hang up since we, you cannot reveal all this <laughs> info. Yeah. You have to tell me though. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we should uh, definitely uh, get to, to do, like you said, maybe like a new single outside of our albums and stuff, just a new collab. I would love to do something with you again. And um, I think that's about it for today. I'm not going to take up much of your time. Thank you so much, Angel. It's uh so good to see you again so Absolutely. you know i mean it's it's been a, it's been a a crazy year for everybody uh, for humanity and um i uh yeah Who would actually the last show i played was with you before this whole thing oh, happened shit yeah you're right that was at the, at the yeah. house of blues yeah nam the nam show 2020 who would have i mean nobody would have seen that one coming like two months after that like no one dude we were just um we were just doing what we normally do yeah. you know yeah we were having a ball doing it man that was a such a such a fun show man it was um and then i think uh i did a a, a show, um a cameo in the vet young from covet i did uh like a little cameo one of their music videos literally a week before everything shut down you know it was like six people all like you know it was like a zombie palm you know like i was a zombie and like everyone was eating each other and it was a lot oh, of fun cool. holy shit god forbid you know like that would have been a recipe for disaster <laughs> <laughs> well 
Wow, man. Yeah, in in incredible. Well, anyways, I hope uh, we get to see better days. I think we will get to see better days, uh, you know, and everybody will start socializing more again. And um, I want to be positive. Oh. You know, I, I think positive all the time. And it, I, th I still think maybe this year might be a bit tough, but I think um, we're getting there. And uh, hopefully when all this stuff is out of the way, hope we can get to hang out again, jam. Why not maybe do another tour, even though that might be a little bit further down the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, for sure, dude. I, it'll be on my honor. And again, thank you so much for having me. And it's always good to catch up with you. And uh, yeah, man, I hope that you, uh, you know, stay safe and stay productive and you know, keep fighting the good fight, my guy. Thank you. Take it easy, Angel. And we'll be in touch, my friend. Thank you all for watching. So...